Here's the deal. If you're walking down the street and someone says to you, hey, what does the mayor of New York do? How would you respond? In reality, you'd probably keep walking because that's kind of an odd question. But if you were to answer, what would you say? Most people's gut reaction is that the mayor runs the city, which doesn't explain a whole lot. There are a lot of things that are required to run New York City, most of which the mayor does not do. Like, when was the last time you saw the mayor driving a train, or inspecting a restaurant's kitchen, or obscuring the license plate on a city vehicle to escape tickets? Although mayors of New York City are usually well recognized, I think it's fair to say that not enough people know about the actual responsibilities of the position. That's what we're here today to answer. Let's start at the ground floor. The mayor is the elected executive leader of New York City. Mayors are elected by popular vote every four years and may run for two back-to-back -back terms. Mayors can theoretically serve for more than two terms as long as they're not consecutive. Mayors of New York City have seven main responsibilities. First up, approving or vetoing bills. The position of mayor is analogous to being a state governor or a U.S. president. Similar to those positions, mayors can sign bills into law but cannot write bills. That's the job of the city council which is the legislative body within the city. The city council is analogous to state legislatures or the US Congress. However, the city council is slightly different. There's no House of Representatives and Senate, but instead only one legislative body. State legislatures and the US Congress are bicameral institutions, and the city council is unicameral. Second, the mayor proposes the city budget. While mayors cannot write bills, they can propose the city's budget which the city council then has the power to negotiate and, if there's enough support, approve. This might sound a bit boring, but keep in mind that the New York City budget alone is larger than the budgets of over two-thirds of the countries around the world. It's a big deal, with everything from the fire department to public transportation to libraries to the parks department receiving significant funds from the city budget. Third, appointments. The mayor is tasked with appointing, and if necessary, removing the commissioners who run each citywide department. New York City has over 40 departments that engage in the day-to-day -day work that keeps the city running. Think of the Housing Authority, Department of Small Business Services, or the Department of Health. If mayors think there should be another mayoral agency, they have the power to create one, as long as the city council doesn't object in the first 90 days. The mayor also appoints family court judges, interim civil court judges, and criminal court judges, as well as deputy mayors. Despite the name, the deputy mayors are more like assistants to the mayor, who can help with administrative coordination between the mayor's office and other facets of citywide government. The position is not analogous to a lieutenant governor or a vice president. If the mayor is unable to continue serving in office, a deputy mayor does not instantly become mayor, the public advocate does. In fact, the position of deputy mayor is not even outlined in the city charter. Perhaps I'll talk about this again in the future. Fourth, executive orders. The mayor can craft executive orders, similar to how US presidents or state governors can as well. These do not require approval from the city council and they don't have unlimited jurisdiction. In general, it's best not to think of mayoral executive orders as mayors running mad with power, but rather mayors setting priorities for city agencies that they already control. Let's say that the mayor wanted to add a bench in a nearby park. A newspaper might report it as, mayor constructs new park bench, but what it really is is that the mayor ordered the Department of Parks and Recreation, which the mayor already controls, to prioritize the installation of a new bench. Fifth, sitting ex officio on various boards. An ex officio member is someone who is able to join a group by virtue of holding a certain position. In the case of New York City, the mayor, just by virtue of being mayor, sits on the boards of many non-governmental, non-profit organizations that have a presence in the city. This includes, but is not limited to, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and the National September 11th Memorial Museum. Sixth, managing city properties. The New York City government owns more land by far in the city than any other single entity. It is the responsibility of the office of the mayor to maintain that land and to coordinate city contracts. Seventh and last, the mayor represents the city. When New York City needs to be represented in Albany, the capital of New York State where the state legislature is located and the governor lives, Washington DC, in meetings with regional partners such as Connecticut and New Jersey, the other two members of the tri-state area, or on the international stage, the mayor is the one to do so. 
This is analogous to how the U.S. President or Vice President represents the United States when traveling abroad. When mayors physically leave the city, they are still representing the city. When mayors speak, people listen. Mayors may have the loudest figurative voice in city politics, but they can also be influential outside of the five boroughs. People might not always agree with mayors, but mayors still have power of the pulpit. Let's review. Mayors, who can serve up to two consecutive four-year terms, approve or veto bills sent from the city council, propose and negotiate the city budget, appoint department commissioners, judges, and deputy mayors, craft executive orders, serve on a bunch of boards, manage city properties, and broadly represent the interests of New York City. Oh, and one more thing. Mayors have the ability to live in Archibald Gracie Mansion, usually just called Gracie Mansion, although not all have done so. It's located in Carl Schurz Park in the Yorkville neighborhood on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, in case you want to go and say hi to the mayor.